I scheduled with Signal Peak Outfitters to go mule deer hunting in uh, New Mexico over by Roswell. A friend of mine, Josh, he started working with New Mexico lion hunters that year. Josh calls me up and he goes, hey, we had a lion hunt scheduled and uh, everything's set up, but the hunters couldn't come. So do you want to come up here a couple days early and hunt lions with us? And we'll just leave from that lion hunt and go down the mountain to Roswell and hunt the mule deer. And I said, all right. And I headed to New Mexico. Check-in time, 7.30 a.m. Thursday, December 29th. We are rolling to New Mexico to try to track down a lion and get a lion with our bow. 608 miles, 12 hours of travel, trailer behind me, ready to rock and roll. When we get there, and it's below freezing at night and then just gets above freezing during the day. So on the sunny side of the mountain, the snow melts. On the shady side of the mountain, it's, the snow's thick. And uh, we get out there day one, go out hunting. We jump a lion track first thing in the morning. The dogs get on that lion. Here's our first set of tracks this morning. Those look pretty fresh. Let's see how big he is. All right, track number two for the day. Looks like a much bigger cat. Let's see. Yeah, I would say he's bigger. Oh man, shooting light has arrived. Everybody's getting ready to start loading up. So we're gonna head up there, that way. Freaking cold out. Got dogs barking everywhere. It's just a beautiful day though. Perfect for this kind of hunting. This is the other down the hill view where that lion came up from last night or this morning. He actually, we drove down this road at about five o'clock this morning, came around here. That lion came up about 5.30 right there, walked up our track and then crossed right through here. Went right up there. Hey, hey. So Sean, the wise old sage out there, he's, he's my age. He says, uh, man, there's just one female cat that's out here and she is the smartest cat on the mountain. I've chased her three or four times. The dogs will jump her and she'll run to a tree and she'll get the dogs around her and then she'll bolt and she'll head straight up into these bluffs and uh, she'll get up in the bluffs and the dogs can't get to her and she'll jump bluff to bluff to bluff and then she'll get out of the way and the dogs will be stuck there trying to find her on a bluff and they can't find her and uh, she'll get away. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. I don't know what a bluff is. Do you know what a bluff is? No. Most people don't know what a bluff is. In a, anyway, a bluff is a shot of mountain that sticks up out of the side of the mountain and it's just a little rock formation that sticks up. It's got a flat top. So you walk up to it and you look up and you're like, oh man, how do you get up there? Well, those mountain lions are smart and they can jump side to side or climb up or they go around the backside and they just can jump from bluff to bluff. So we get out there, jump this big cat, and it's two miles away from the bluffs. And it starts heading toward the bluffs and the dogs are chasing it and he goes, oh man, I think that's that cat. a little bit, hundred yards away, and the lion is up on some bluffs. Yeah, we gained about thousand feet of elevation. We got just about nine tenths of a mile. Who'd have thunk? That was a pack. And we're not even done yet. But just getting up this far. This whole boy. 
Holy oh, shit. It's like 12 degrees out and I'm sweating like crazy. That shit's in layers. We get to the bluffs and sure enough, the dogs are trying to tree her and she's up in the bluffs and they can't get her. And one of the dogs gets trapped. And uh, so Sean stays up there. He's trying to get up there and we work trying to get this dog down probably two or three hours. And uh, I'm asking, what can I do? And they're like, go down to the bottom of the bluff and get a fire started and get some food warm for us. What a shame heading back. That lion was one everybody up here knows about. Female, older. She knows the drill. Get the, get the dogs up in the rocks, jump rock to rock where they can't get to her, and then move on, and they're stuck. Anyway, we get our steps in for the day. We're about to go to uh, track number two that we picked up this morning. I'll follow up a little later. It's about 11.30. What a morning. That was awesome. Whew. Get a little snack. Do a little drive. Get lying down tonight. And uh, they're trying to get the dog and they can't get the dog. So we go back to camp. And night one, I'm, I'm feeling heartbroken because Sean's lost a dog. And usually it doesn't end well for a dog when they're stuck on a bluff. But we get on Facebook, we go down where we can get some service, we get on Facebook and we're asking for some help. And this freaking uh, rock climbing group comes in the middle of the night, like two o'clock in the morning, they show up. They show up out there and they're like, hey, we're here to help. We're gonna get this dog. And they did. They couldn't get up to the dog, so they went up above the dog and rappelled down to it. Sean went up there with them. Um, Josh and I went to sleep because Sean said, y'all need to get some rest because even if I can't go, y'all are gonna go hunt. So. Josh and I went and got some sleep and about four or five in the morning, they come hiking back in and they had, they'd rescued the dog and uh, got her off the bluff and brought her down. And uh, she, was, she had been scratched or torn up from the, the rocks, but she was in good shape and healthy. Then we got up and went out searching some more tracks and we got on a track uh, first thing in the morning again, right before sunrise and we took off after it and uh, it, that lion ran down into the sunny side of the mountain and we lost the track in the mud. So Sean said, well, I'm gonna keep walking with my dogs and Sean got on his horse and he's following that track, trying to find that lion again. And Josh and I took off up the side of the mountain to go back up to camp and get some rest. It's probably 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. We see a track in the snow, so Josh stops and checks it out and he takes one of his dogs out and the dog is sniffing and barking in a way to tell Josh that this is a fresh track. So he grabs a couple more dogs. He says, hey, get ready. I'll uh, call you on the radio or text you if uh, we need to follow this track. So Josh takes off up the mountain. So I get out of the truck and Josh calls on the radio and goes, hey, this is a good track. The dogs are on them, let's go. So I jump out, get my backpack, strap my bow in, set my arrows on top of the truck and head up the mountain. And get about a quarter of a mile up the mountain and Josh says, hey, wait here. I think they got them treed. So stay right here where we're at. So he takes off and walks up to where the dogs are at and I'm sitting where we stopped. And I said, okay, well, I'm gonna take a break while we're here. So I take my backpack off. I take my bow off and I hang it on a tree and I'm getting a snack and I get some water and I'm doing some little video recording myself with the iPhone and I'm doing an update and I go to put everything back together and I realize, man, that was really easy to put my backpack back together and put my bow back on. It's not usually this easy, what's missing? Like, oh crap, my arrows are down at the truck. So I called Josh, I was like, hey dude, I gotta run back to the truck and get my arrows. He goes, you don't have time. They got this thing treed, you need to get up here right now. So I take off, I was like, oh crap, what am I gonna shoot with? And he goes, we got the rifle and we got a pistol, so get up here. I'm like, all right, so it bummed me out, but you can't, when you're hunting a lion, you can't just stop and miss that opportunity because you might not get another opportunity. And we had limited time and um, limited opportunities. So I, I go hiking up there. I got my bow on the back with no, no bullets for my bow. We get up there and the damn lion jumps out of the tree and takes off running again. So it takes off running, the dogs are chasing it. Now I'm a, a mile away from the truck. And Sean's coming in and he says, hey, I'm gonna come around the other side of where you guys are at. I can hear your dogs barking. So he's running up the road with his dogs and the horse. He says, hey, I'm at the truck. Do you want me to grab the arrows? And Josh says, no, don't worry about it. The truck's locked. He doesn't realize I set the arrows on top of the truck. Sean walks right past my arrows sitting on top of the truck and thinks, that's really strange, but I'm gonna listen to him. So Sean comes around. 
he comes in and he, his dogs get on the lion, Josh's dogs get on the lion. Come to find out when we got to where the lion finally got treed and we harvested her, we're only like 500 yards from the truck. I could have stayed at the truck and come in that way where the horse came in and the dogs came in and uh, would have had my arrows and would have got to the lion without that much hiking. Don't forget, click like, click subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notified. Thanks for watching.